Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So some particularly exciting news has come unveiled, and that was last night, Blackmagic announced on Twitter that the public version of DaVinci Resolve was now available on the App Store for iPad. I've been using this guy for about the last 18 hours, and I wanna let you guys know what my first impressions are. Now this isn't gonna be the full review, because I need more time with it, that's gonna come at a later time, but these are my first impressions, and I wanna let you guys know what I think, and if there's anything you should be aware of before you hop on in. Now when you first download DaVinci Resolve, I almost guarantee you that you're gonna go through a number of emotions here. The first is that you're gonna be super excited that DaVinci Resolve is here, you're gonna download it. Great. Then you're gonna open it up and you're gonna get even more excited. You're gonna be like, this looks very similar to the desktop app. Then you're gonna hop into editing, and then your heart's gonna drop a little bit because you're gonna be like, I can't figure this out. Some of these things aren't working. Why isn't this working? Why isn't that working? How do I do this? This isn't making any sense. And I almost guarantee you that in that first part of editing, you're gonna become extremely mad and extremely frustrated with DaVinci Resolve. But here's the thing, stick with it. Stick with it because once you learn how to use it from what I found, you're gonna like it. That initial probably like first two and a half, three hours, I was really mad. And since it is a brand new app, literally, aside from the people that had it in beta, there aren't exactly a lot of instruction videos on how to do stuff. But stick it out and you will like it. Now, for this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the basic layout on a very general terms, just for your very first beginner's guide of what it looks like, and I'm gonna show you a couple things that really annoyed me at first, that actually took me a few hours to kind of figure out, that you should know about before you hop in, and certain changes that you should know about to actually do what you wanna do. All right, so first thing first, here's what the app looks like, just like the one on desktop, you click it. It actually loads extremely quickly. On the desktop, I usually have it take a while, but it loads extremely quickly. And then here is your home screen. And now let's say we wanna create a new project. So just like on the desktop, you're gonna click that, you're gonna click new project, you can name it, new project, whatever you want. I think I just typed, well I can't type anyway. Let's call it sample. And then here you are. So the initial screen looks basically very similar to the desktop version. Now a couple things here. So yes, you can use your finger completely. You can also use the Apple Pencil if you desire. Now I personally use a keyboard and a mouse. I feel like it just makes it a lot faster because it almost feels like I actually am on a computer, but it is up to you. So let's say that we wanna import some media. Let's say we wanna have some folders. So I'm gonna hold down. That's gonna be like the right click. I'm gonna create new bin. Let's say main camera. Done. Let's do it again, and let's do new bin, let's say music, done. So go into the main camera, I'm gonna double click it, I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna do import media here, and then here's all the places I can import, all your locations, I have mine on my iPad, and I'm gonna just select a couple videos here. Open. Okay, let's say that you're starting off fresh, you wanna start editing. A Couple ways we can do this. You can go into your area where you have the video, you can just select one and drag it down. You can also go like this to select multiple. You can hold down and you can say, create new timeline using selected clips. Here you have this selection just like you do on the desktop. Let's say that mine's all 4K. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change this to my 4K. I'm gonna change this to 30 frames per second. And then I can click create. It puts it down. Now. Let's talk about this screen because this was a little bit frustrating at first. This whole section here is basically the entire length of your videos combined. You cannot zoom out or zoom in to this area right here, which for me was very frustrating at first, but that's the way it is. Over here on the side, you can select if you want the volume to display for that clip. You can also turn off the actual video and maybe just have the volume. Okay, so now let's go up to this corner of the screen. So you have the inspector, just like you do in desktop mode. You have a variety of settings that you can zoom in, zoom out, change the stabilization, whatnot for the video. You have the same for the audio. You can turn the volume up, down. Now let's look over here. Just like in desktop mode, you have some effects for video. You also have effects for audio. You have the generators, just like you do in desktop mode where you can basically take like a screen and throw it in there like that. Over here, you also have titles and then you have transitions. Great. Okay, so at this point you're like, great. It's very similar to the desktop mode. I really like it. Then you're gonna start editing and you're gonna see some things and run into some things that just plain old aren't very intuitive. They don't make much sense. You keep trying to do stuff and it just doesn't work out. So I'm gonna show you a couple things here that you should know about before you start pulling out your hair. Now in my video editing, a lot of times I have two cameras that I need to sync. I have this main camera and then I have a top down camera and I need to sync them so that I don't have to like manually plug everything together. When I first got this app, 
I saw over here you have the sync button, which implies that that's where you do the syncing. But I could not get it to figure out. And the way I'm about to show you, I don't know if this is the official way that you're supposed to do this, but this is how I figured out how to make the syncing actually work. So let me show you that now. You actually don't go to the screen yet. So you go over here to your media. I'm gonna go over here. I am going to right click new bin. This is going to be my synced media. And then let's go into that. We're gonna go ahead and import media. Okay, so here's a number of videos. These all need to be synced up. The way you do this is you're gonna select all of them. Then you're gonna go up here to this icon and hit that. That's the syncing button. At this point, you can see they're all just lined up together. Here's the options that you can sync up by, similar to the desktop. What I find works best is the actual audio. So I'm gonna select this one, and then I'm gonna hit sync. Okay, so there's our videos synced. Now, as you can see, when you look at these, everything is synced appropriately. This is my main camera. Here's all my other camera. Now, this camera can't record things in big files, so it splits them up like this. As you can see, everything is synced appropriately. Now in the desktop version, I could take these and bring them up so that all these clips from the same camera are all aligned. For some reason, I can't do that in the sync for the iPad. So what are you supposed to do? Well, you save your sync, there's that. Now you're left with this screen and you're like, well, what do I do now? How do I, how do I make these work? So what I used to do is I would double click here I would say create new timeline using the selected clips. This is how I would do it on desktop. I would collect, select Ultra HD here, and I'd change this to 30, and then I'd say create. Now when I did this on the desktop, everything would match up. All my synced clips would be where they're supposed to be, where I have my main camera, and then all the other cameras would be on top here, and then I could basically arrange them that way. But as you can see on this version, it doesn't do that. Even though these clips are synced, this is my main first video. And then over here, we see all the other videos are just added in one after the other after the other. And the way you know that is you look at your main, I'm gonna call it like the main timeline here, and you see that you have your main video, and then just all the other little ones are added in after it, which is not helpful to me. I need to have all these other little clips on top of the main clip. But for some reason, it doesn't do that. So then you're left thinking, well, what do I do instead? Well, then you go to the sync, and you look at these, and you say, well, everything is matched up. As I scroll through this video, the camera changes to the appropriate one, as you can see, which it's synced appropriately, but for some reason, it does not display on the timeline correctly. I don't know if I'm just stupid, which is probably the case, but I cannot figure out how to make that display on the timeline correctly. But I did figure out a workaround for it. So the workaround that I found for this is that you're gonna go into the sync bin because it is all synced there, and then you are just gonna scroll right on through until you get to the point over here that your actual second clip starts. So what we can see right there is where it's synced correctly. So I'm gonna drag this right there, and it magnetically aligns. And now let's double click this. And actually let's go back to the start here where it was magnetically aligned, there it is. And then if you look down here, this is the actual section of the video that you're gonna import. As you can see, only a tiny selection was selected. So I'm gonna drag that all the way out so that everything is selected. And then I'm gonna take the video and then I'm gonna drag it down, and it magnetically aligns, and now you can see we're synced. Great. So now you're gonna go all the way to the next video, which you can take this and go right like that. And then over here, we see that our next one's starting. Camera six. So let's go ahead into that guy, double click him, select everything, and then drag him down. But now that we're here, now a couple other things come up. So as you can see, the video and the audio for each of these clips are not separated. They're all in one file. Even if you right click, there's no option there to split up the audio from the video. So what do you do? Well, let's say we want this to be 
our video display, but we don't want the actual audio of this clip, we want the, the audio of this one. Well, what you have to do is these over here on the side are basically, the way I think of them now is like, they are like, for that whole section, those are the settings for that whole section. So you have like this section with its settings, you have this section with its settings, you can make another section by hitting this button right here with its settings, and then whatever video you put there, those settings will, to, will apply to it. So let's say, for example, that here's my main camera, but I don't want the audio for this. I wanna use the audio from this one since it's synced. So I'm gonna go ahead and deselect this audio. I don't want any of this entire clip's audio, but I may want the video. So let's say the video starts out, I'm talking, blah, 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 and then I wanna switch over to my main bin here. Well, at this point, since this is on top of this, Everything that is shown is gonna be the, the main camera on the second line. So let's go out of the sync here, and then, as you can see, the main camera is what's being displayed. Now, the audio is correctly coming from that one, but what if I want this one? So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to turn off the camera for this whole entire section. Now I've got the audio coming from this line and all these clips, and I've got the camera coming from this one. But let's say we get to the part in the video where I need to look at something that's on the desk. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here. On the keyboard, you can do Command B. And then I'm going to drag that up to my third section. Now in this section, we still wanna use this audio, but in this one, this time, we do want the video to be used. So let's say I'm gonna go all the way to right here, and then I wanna look back at the main camera. I'm gonna do another cut, and I'm gonna drag the section back down. That way, the way this works is you've got me coming through right here, and I do have the, video, the volume turned down, so that's why you're not hearing anything, but let's play this. So you've got the main camera, then it changes to the setting where it shows the top down, then it changes to the setting again, where we go back to the main camera, but all the while we are just using the volume from these two clips. So that is how I figured out how to make syncing work. I don't know why it automatically doesn't just sync like it does on desktop and you can't just select the camera. Now, if you have the fancy um, little block where you can control it from DaVinci Resolve, then you actually can do that. I was watching some reviews of guys doing that. But if you don't have that, this is the only way I can figure out how to make it work. Now, I have only used it for a few hours, but this is how I'm figuring out how to make it work. So don't pull your hair out trying to figure out because you can do this. Now, something else that was super aggravating at first is let's say that you have your video here. Now we wanna add some music. We go over to our media. We've already uploaded it. Here it is. You bring it down. It looks like it's gonna put it in. You drop it, nothing happens. You try it again, you drop it, nothing happens. You create a new little video thing, you drop it, nothing happens. You would think that when you drop in an audio file, it would automatically create an audio section, but it actually doesn't exactly do that. You have to know how to do that. So the reason it's not working here is because these ones are all for video. What you need to do is right here, you can adjust how high the uh, top section is. Now, if you look, when I have it adjusted, and I have multiple video things. When I have it adjusted right here, you just have video, 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 video. The important thing with sound or with music is that you have to drop it below, but there's a catch. So if I were to try to drop this below right here, nothing's gonna work. I can drop it, nothing's happening. The reason why is because if I take this and bring it up just a bit, now you have a little section down there. If you can see it on the camera, there's a very little section right here. You have to take this and drop it into that section and make sure it's displayed. And then your audio will show up. Very frustrating. But once you know how to do it, then it's all good and it works. Okay, so those are the little things that I noticed on my very first impressions that were really driving me crazy that I could not figure out that actually took a couple hours to figure out. And hopefully that will save someone some time by just seeing that that's how you do it, that's how you can make it work. Further on down the road, other people and myself might figure out other ways that this is actually supposed to be done, but that's how I figured out how to make it work. Now, real quick, some things about DaVinci Resolve that are super good. Now, I don't know if this is specific to the cut tab here, but basically if you take this and you make an edit right here, and then you make another edit right over here, 
Normally when I deleted this in the desktop version, I have a big space here and I have to drag everything over. You can hit delete and it will automatically delete. Another cool thing is if you hold down right here, you have some selections. First you can make a cut, but then you can select everything to the right or everything to the left, which is very cool and handy if you're trying to make massive changes to everything to the left or right of a specific line. What's the actual process look like when you're using it? Is the iPad overheating? Is it crashing? And I edited a pretty long video for several hours that had lots and lots of 4K clips and the iPad did extremely good. Now one of the first things is that in all my experience using DaVinci Resolve with both with the iMac as well as with a Windows computer that is pretty powerful, I can never actually watch the video as I'm editing it. Like I'll hear little bits and pieces and it's very, if you've used it, you know what I'm talking about most likely, but it's, it's not exactly smooth. With the iPad here, I could completely watch every single section. It was, it was perfect editing. It was very good editing. There was no choppiness. There was no like audio coming through, but no video. It was very smooth and very nice. Extremely, extremely nice. And that just goes to show that it is taking advantage of the massive power of the iPad. Would the iPad overheat or have any kind of issues? I never had the app crash on me at all. It never started overheating. The only thing it did do is number one, it drains the battery really fast, so I highly recommend having this plugged in. And then as it's editing for several hours, you'll suddenly notice the screen drop in brightness, just a little pinch. And you'll be like, wait, did the screen drop in brightness? And then you'll go to turn it back up and you'll see that it already is maxed out. And then a little while later, it might drop a little bit more. And that's just because it is getting hot. And then something else that it might do is when it's like exporting video, it might stop receiving power from the charger because it is getting so hot inside and it'll put up a little notification that says we've stopped charging the iPad until your iPad reaches a more comfortable temperature again. And on that note, how does this perform as you're exporting a video? So I exported a 4K video that was about 17 minutes long and it took about 23 minutes. So very good, very happy with it. It's, it's good, and this is the free version of DaVinci Resolve as well. So those are my first impressions. I absolutely love this app. I can almost guarantee you that when you first start using this app, there is gonna be a learning curve. It is gonna be frustrating at first. Hopefully showing you these few things will help kind of address some of the issues you might run into. But overall, once you figure out all that stuff that you don't know at first and you get through those learning curves or whatever you wanna call them, this is a really good app. I am really, really happy with it. It is what I expected for the iPad. Now there could be a little bit more things like that they could do to make it a little bit more user friendly, but I am really happy with this app. I'm gonna be taking this on the airplane and with other places so that I can do some editing. I'm extremely happy and I'm, I, I'm really liking it. So stick with it, keep figuring out the, the app for your own editing needs and there you go. I hope you guys like this video. Thanks for watching.